If you're watching this video, you probably already decided that you wanted to be a little bit more productive or you're looking to improve your efficiency. You probably heard a lot about the benefits of a morning routine and exactly what it's done for successful people and you want to try and incorporate that into your own life. But I think that developing a good morning routine is actually a really personalized process that needs to fit into your individualized goals. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Andrew. Welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about sort of my personal, anecdotal, and research-based evidence that I've used to develop a very effective morning routine that allows me to sort of be productive throughout eight to 12 hours of studying every single day. I'm gonna be breaking this video down into three parts, the why, the what, and the how. We need to know why we wanna develop a routine in the first place, what exactly we wanna incorporate into the routine, and then lastly, how we put that all together and make it happen. So why should you develop a morning routine? Whenever we create any sort of routine or habit, we always become more efficient, which helps us save energy and time. What this helps us do is create patterns of behavior that are long lasting and sustainable and are actually healthier. As we develop routines and habits, we actually practice executive control over our behaviors. Practicing that executive control over and over and over eventually creates a habit. All of these habits become basically unconscious automatic processes that we don't even have to worry about anymore. That can essentially mean an incredible amount of time that you get to save throughout your day. As you develop a really successful morning routine, you'll notice that you don't have to dedicate a lot of cognitive resources to menial tasks like brushing your teeth or pouring your coffee or getting changed. Everything is just always automatic. And as it becomes more automatic, you get to dedicate that pool of mental resources to actually meaningful goals like studying. It's actually something called cognitive energetics theory. And it talks about how we have a pool of mental resources and how that pool of mental resources is essentially a driving force to obtaining a specific goal. But obtaining this specific goal has something called task demands. Those task demands are in direct opposition to this driving force. When task demands become too great, the driving force is actually diminished to the point where we're not really motivated to complete it. Conversely, the more energy that we have in our pool of mental resources, we can actually use that to sustain a driving force that's great enough that we can actually obtain our goals. As you develop habits and routines, you actually create a very conducive environment for saving energy and time. As we become more efficient with the pool of mental resources that we're given, we actually have more of a driving force to obtain specific goals. Developing a good morning routine is the first step to doing this. So now let's talk about the principles that you should actually incorporate. The first principle that I think you need to incorporate into your morning routine is to create urgency. One of the main reasons that I see people not following a morning routine is because they have nothing that they necessarily need to look forward to. In my day-to-day -day studies, I am completely self-accountable. One of the best ways that I have found to create urgency is to set a go time. This is the time in your morning where you have settled everything that you need to do, you have everything that you need to sit down at your desk, and you are ready for peak performance. For example, my go time every single morning is at 8 a.m. This is a non-negotiable time period, but I need to sit down at my desk no matter what, and start working. A really important factor about practicing this principle of creating urgency is to make it something that you're actually really driven to accomplish. For instance, I'm studying for the MCAT right now. I know that if I don't do well in my MCAT, I'm not gonna get into medical school. If I don't get into medical school, I won't become a doctor. So your go time needs to be connected to your goals and exactly what you want to achieve. Once you've created a go time that's associated with a really important goal that you're driven to accomplish, waking up every single morning is actually gonna be an enjoyable experience that you look forward to because your urgency isn't about stress. The urgency that you've linked to your go time is something that you actually want to do. And no, maybe you don't want to study for eight hours, but you want to become a doctor. And to become a doctor, you have to sit down and you have to do the work. This essentially just becomes a non-negotiable time that you get up and you're ready to go. Okay, so this next one is a weird one. And it actually comes from personal experience, but the next key principle that I think that you should incorporate into your mornings is to create space. What I mean by this is that there's essentially a reason that I feel like we have a tendency to stretch in the morning. It feels good and it just sort of like expands things. <laughs> I don't really know how to say it. It's sort of metaphysical, but like opening yourself up feels really beneficial. It sort of feels like an invitation from me to the world that I'm ready for the day, I'm ready to go, I wanna get up, I'm ready to do this. A lot of the times this is people's mobility routines or their morning runs, but this can literally be in the form of anything you want. It can be something as simple as going to your window every single morning and opening it. For some people, it's walking to their mailbox. What I mean by creating space is just opening yourself up, getting yourself moving, exposing yourself to some sunlight, just getting ready for being awake. When I say create space, I don't just mean physically, but I also mean mentally. I personally don't meditate, but I know that a lot of successful people incorporate that into their mornings. I don't think that meditation is totally necessary. My form of creating mental space is through my writing. Every day I wake up and while I'm having my morning cup of coffee, I sit down and I write. However you decide to create this mental and physical space, the one key thing to do is to focus on the intention of feeling good. 
Just take like 10 seconds or like one deep breath of intentionally trying to feel really good about yourself. I think that's a super important component to every morning. So anyways, that's my weird metaphysical spiel. The next sort of fundamental principle that I think any good morning routine has is essentially to limit decisions. Back in 2017, I actually had a pretty bad concussion that put me in the hospital for like three to six months. After coming out of that experience, I noticed that I had a really hard time making executive decisions. I was given a lot of opportunity, but I never knew which path to take or which decision was the right one. And eventually I would either just not make a decision at all, or I would pick too many at once. And then my focus wouldn't be directed in a certain goal and I would never obtain something. And it just became this big cycle of stress and anxiety and it's not good. What limiting decisions actually means is to limit the physical amount of decisions that you have to make in your morning so that you can just do it. Steve Jobs is famous for having literally worn the same exact outfit throughout his entire professional career. And he did it because he wants to limit decision fatigue. Decision fatigue is actually a scientifically supported hypothesis that explains why too many decisions are bad for our health. The quality of our subsequent decisions actually decrease and we just become scatterbrained in like limitless possibilities. It's actually a story that sort of fundamentally changed the way that I think about this. Essentially imagine somebody comes up to you and they say, hey, do you wanna play a game? And obviously you agree. And so they sit down across from you and they say, okay, you go first. And obviously not knowing the rules of the game, you're sort of left to do whatever you want and you don't really know what to do. You're sort of paralyzed with all of these limitless possibilities. By physically limiting the decisions between our wake up and our go time, we can actually just become way more efficient, way more productive. For example, every single morning I go to make my cup of coffee. And every single morning I have the same mug with the same kind of coffee and that's it. I don't need to think about which coffee I want to drink. I don't need to think about which mug I want to use. I just know because I physically limited the amount of decisions that I'm allowed to choose from. An important component to limiting decisions is to not look at your phone. Look, if you want to allocate a specific time in your morning to sit down and check your phone, do it. But you need to understand that your phone is literally designed to just make you sit there and look at it. It takes up so much of your time. I've made a habit of not checking my phone until I sit down and I have my cup of coffee and it's done amazing things for me. I think you'll find that for every element in your morning routine that you limit at least one decision, you'll find this exponential increase in efficiency that actually makes you feel really good and gets you ready for your go time. The last principle that you should think about incorporating into your mornings is to prepare. Look, you might be thinking to yourself, but the morning routine is my preparation, but it's not really. But wouldn't it feel so much better going into your morning, knowing what you're ready to do? If you properly treat your go time as something that demands your absolute 100% peak performance, you're gonna find that preparation is kind of unavoidable. The kind of preparation I'm talking about is the kind that actively comes before the day ahead. This involves writing down intentions and a to-do list and really outlining exactly what you're going to be doing the next day so that you don't have to spend mental resources in the morning trying to figure out what your go time is going to be dedicated to. Instead, you can sort of fill in your morning routine to be more meaningful to you and incorporate other elements that are relaxing and other things that just don't induce stress. My preparation actually comes in two phases. The first is the night before where I write down all of the non-negotiables that I have to obtain the moment that I sit down at my desk for my go time. The second phase is more of a qualitative intention that I set for myself during my writing period when I sit down with my cup of coffee in the mornings. Ultimately, some form of preparation is just extremely extraordinarily beneficial. This can even be setting out your clothes before the day ahead or getting a glass of water to sit by your bedside. Again, it's really just up to what you want to accomplish and what you want to prepare for. Before we get on to this last part, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for watching this far already. If you like what you see and you thought that it was helpful, let me know your feedback in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. It helps motivate me to keep making more of these videos. So anyways, let's get back into it. So how should you go about incorporating these things into your mornings? The first thing that I encourage you to do is to write down what is important to you. Consider what your non-negotiables are for your morning. Do you need coffee? Do you like to shower? Do you like to exercise? Whatever it is you wanna do, you need to write it down in a stepwise manner. This way you can start to estimate how much time you need from the moment that you wake up to the moment that you're ready to go. Once you have all of your non-negotiables written down, you can start to line them up from the time period at which you wake up in the most reasonable manner. For instance, I know the second that I wake up, I'm going to go use the bathroom, I'm going to go make my cup of coffee. As my cup of coffee is being brewed, I'm gonna go brush my teeth, wash my face, change my clothes. At that point in time, my coffee's ready to go. I can grab my computer, grab my journal, go get my coffee, grab my coffee, drink my coffee, sit down at the table, write in my journal, write on my laptop, 
and then I'm ready to go and just go to work. It really does become that automatic. But the first thing that you need to do is write down what is important to you. The second way you can go about incorporating all these things into your mornings is to just experiment. Embolden what serves you and just scrap what doesn't. For instance, I love working out, but I know that if I work out in the mornings, I'm gonna come home and I'm just gonna wanna literally go back to sleep. Over time, I've just learned what serves my needs best. And the last point about how to implement all of these principles is just to understand that consistency is key. It's so cliche, but habits just don't become habits unless you do them every single day. You need a decent span of time of doing these things consistently before you'll notice any sort of appreciable change. Simon Sinek actually has this really awesome quote He's talking about love, but he essentially says that love is not about intensity, it's about consistency. Since you don't recall the moment that you actually fall in love with somebody, rather you just kind of wake up and you're like, oh, I'm in love. The same principle extends to anything we do. The law of accumulation basically just says that 1% incremental changes over a long period of time have big impacts. So that with consistency, you're just eventually gonna find that your morning routines are just so much easier and they're so beneficial to your health and your well-being, and you just get so much more done. With a successful morning routine, I'm actually really excited to wake up every single morning because I know it's gonna be super easy between the time that I wake up and the time that I'm sitting down on my desk. I hope that this video helped to inspire you to create your own morning routine, as well as learn why morning routines are helpful in the first place. If you thought the video was helpful, I would be so appreciative if you could leave your feedback in the comments, subscribe to the channel, give it a like, let me know what you thought. It helps motivate me to keep making these types of videos. Want to see what it was like in a day of my life as a surgical assistant? Go ahead, click this video. If not, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you guys in the next video.